Hello everybody, this is Toyn here from Property Pillars. Thank you for joining me for our Facebook Live discussion this Sunday evening on the topic of affordable housing. Um, I hope you've had a great weekend. I certainly have had a good rest. I was able to just relax today. I didn't go anywhere. I had some time off with the family. So today's debate is going to follow on from last week's discussion. Remember last week we talked about affordable housing as a topic. Today I wanted us to continue on from that discussion about affordable housing. Um, and this day I wanted to talk about rent controls. Um, the reason why I'm, rent controls is interesting is because it's been in the top, in the Guardian newspaper recently on the 29th of September. Um, an article appeared in the Guardian newspaper talking about rent controls and Jeremy Corbyn during the Labour conference made lots of comments which suggested that Labour Party were in favour of introducing some sort of rent controls to the private sector rental market. And the main reasons for wanting to do this was because they said that the market rates were extremely high and actually unaffordable for the majority of people. And also they said that most landlords were greedy because rents, mortgage rates were relatively low, interest rates are low, inflation rates you know, hasn't gone up at the rates that the rents are, are obviously going up. Wages are frozen. Um, local authority housing allowance is still very much static. There hasn't been very much movement there. So why should landlords be profiting constantly year after year on rents? Why should they be charging whatever they say is market rents for the properties? It's a very interesting discussion. It's a very interesting debate because I feel that for me as a landlord, the landlord has an entitlement to claim what is market rent. And I think most landlords go into the investment property business to make a profit. They go into it because they know that rents are high, mortgage rates are at the moment reasonably low, and they can see a gain. So a lot of people are putting money into it for those reasons. So I have a feeling that for me as a private landlord myself, that would be why most people went into it. However, I do sympathise very much with the tenants because having been a tenant myself, I understand how it can be that you're constantly being expected to pay more and more and more rent from your wages and it can become extremely affordable. It can become very expensive. The cost of living is rising, the cost of food, petrol, council tax, general expenses is going up year after year and your rents are certainly not going up in accordance with the inflation. So for me as a, as a tenant once before, I quite understand the gripe that tenants have about rent controls and what the government should do about it. So we need to think this carefully. Are we looking at a situation that there may be an adjustment should Jeremy Corbyn's suggestion come into play? Because my view is simply this. If we were to go back to 1988, John Major, he overturned the previous um, rent controls regime, which was in place. Because prior to 1988, um, the local authority had a f um, power to assess rents. And what they would do is they will control how much rent each area could charge. So we get a, a local rent officer who would come into the property, have a look around it, assess it for what, it's, what they think it's worth, and fix the maximum rent the landlord could charge. And that figure was sort of fixed for a period, which meant that the rent officer controlled the amount of rent that was available. Now, what happened then was that a lot of investors weren't interested in the property market because it was really controlled. And also in those days, most tenants stayed for longer. They were secured in the knowledge that the rents would be fixed. And most tenancies were assured, unlike nowadays, but most tenancies are a short shot hold. So you can see that things have come a long way. But the downside of that rule was that there weren't enough landlords coming into the property market with properties for rent. So what was happening is landlords were saying, I don't want to get into this game. And in order to put impetus into the, the marketplace, the government had to do something very drastic, which was to remove the rent controls that were in place, which meant effectively... The rent was now being controlled by market forces. And 
Hence, a lot of landlords went into the buy-to-let market and started to buy lots of properties, which made inadvertently more private sector accommodation available for all. Now, that was a good thing that they did then. John Major changed the law so that rent controls were now lifted from private sector housing. Now, 1988 is a long way time ago. Things have changed quite a lot since then. We're not dealing with the, 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 the situation of 1988 where most people couldn't afford to buy their own home, own home. Wages were a lot lower. Getting mortgages wasn't as straightforward and sophisticated as things were. Things have changed a lot. And what we're dealing with today is a very different set of circumstances. So if Jeremy Corbyn's desire or the Labour Party's hope of controlling rent was to become a reality, think about it. How would it affect you as a landlord, if you're a landlord? How would it really affect you? Would you be bothered by it? Would you be concerned that the local authority in the area where your flat was, was now in a position to control the rent that you charged? Hey, I know I would. But have another look at it from the tenant's point of view. If the tenant had rent controls implemented, it would also mean the affordability. It would also mean less financial strain. It would also mean, potentially, longer tenants. You may find that because the rents are more affordable, most tenants don't leave. They've got no reason to go because it's affordable. People move about maybe because they just can't afford to stay. So the arguments are favourable you have to look at both arguments, both sides. So I just wanted to ask you, what were your views? What do you think the law should be? Should there be controls of rent, where the landlords are told how much rent they should charge by the local authority? Or should we leave it as it is? Let the market dictate, let the market forces drive the whole rent control argument and let there be increments of rent, depending on the market. Or should there be an element of control from the government which would freeze market rents so that the market does have some control, but the government also makes recommendations and forces landlords who put the rents up above a certain percentage to be penalised in some sort of taxation or some sort of rule. So what have you decided from this discussion? So that's the discussion on affordable housing today. I'm interested to hear from you. Um, I'll leave the lines open for a little bit longer to hear what your views are. But I think my, my position is... I agree, yes, there should be some rent controls. I agree 100% with that. But it should not be detrimental to those investors who have a genuine desire to invest in property and make a gain on their return. And I also think the government should create an environment where landlords are incentivized for bringing their rents down. So if a landlord is incentivized, um, given some tax breaks or given some... Um, solar panel or double glazing, free double glazing or boiler um, for having lower rent, then perhaps you may get landlords who voluntarily agree um, from their own will to give a reduced rent or fixed rent or less than market rate rent. So that, those are the things that I am thinking of. But it's a discussion that I like your feedback on, I like your views on. And I would look forward to hearing from you. I hope the, la the sound quality is better than last week. And I hope you heard me because last week was a bit not so um, good. But I'm hoping that I can get a more feedback and more response from you. I'm looking forward to your comments. If you've got anything you'd like to add, put your comments below. Even if you're not on the live uh, Facebook page as we're doing this, it will be on, on the Property Pillars page Put your comments, send us an email. We will carry on the discussion on affordable housing next week where I look forward to hearing your views about rent controls. This um, live broadcast is now coming to an end and I want to thank you for those people who have logged in and who have joined. I appreciate that. And I look forward to hearing your comments and your feedback next week from both the landlord's point of view and the tenant's point of view on the topic of rent controls and whether you think it would be a good thing. If you want to get in touch with me, our Property Pillars email address is info at propertypillars.co.uk. Send an email and somebody in the team will be in touch. Or you can give us a call on the office line. Mobile is 0788 971 6462. I would advise you to subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel 
and follow us on Twitter and Instagram because we're going to be posting some more discussions like this on those channels and you can have your say. It will be interesting to hear from you all. So thank you once again for joining me for our quick discussion on affordable housing. Today's topic was on rent controls and we look forward to hearing more of your comments and having a further discussion on this next week Sunday at 9pm on the Property Pillars Facebook page. Until then, have a lovely blessed week and I'll see you soon. Bye.